Welcome back, alchemists, to the Lucky Die. Previously, Lafian learns about true names, Ral asks about liches, Squash learns about magical theory, and Zoltana forges a blade for Talus. Before the party, there is much to do, from reading books on Warcraft to forging blades for Talus. The alchemist come necromancer friend Emil finds himself answering a multitude of questions about lichdom, soulfire, exorcisms, and potion crafting. Raoul, meanwhile, challenges Bogrim to a duel. How much of Emil's past is drenched in blood? How expensive was Zoltana's late fees have been? And how far can Bogrim truly be trusted? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die. arrived to the party maybe like an hour hour late or so give or take like her dad and like she walk into the room and you can see all the kids like run over her and give her hugs and you know she's talking very animated and they start a game of tag anyway a little bit later on in the evening she comes over and she finds um like where like an hour through other than having your sad conversation with bogram where are the lot of you are you hanging out together are you talking to anyone um i'm just gonna follow taylor's around in this one <laughs> hmm. Well, I would assume the four of us arrived probably together, except maybe. Uh, would you say that Sultana was a little late because they're making their own brand, brand spanking new dagger, or did they arrive with us? Uh, no, I think Sultana. I think she's she's uh she's on time with you guys. On time. Yeah, she walks into the party looking baller, <laughs> <laughs> looking fly. <laughs> How how are you dressed up? I'm curious. Like, did anybody dress up for the party? Ooh. Oh, that's important. Uh, so, um, Talis is wearing the same kind of dress that she had from Carson's this morning, except instead of pigtails, she's done her hair in, like, this really long braid that's, like, really kind of, like, really ornate. And you can see that someone has, like, woven, like, ribbons and, like, little bells and stuff into it. Oh. That's Talis. That is adorable. Thank you. I would like to say that Squash is wearing an outfit you guys saw him wearing in the Gentleman's Dueling Club. Actually, oh? he can't. Why? Oh, what? Because his very formal shirt, the one that he was wearing in the Gentleman's Dueling Club, is what they used to get Demi up to um, the, rend- the top of the world. <laughs> and nobody picked it up because it was under a layer of snow. Oh, we left it on top of a mountain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I remember that for a very important reason that you will find out later. Maybe what? question mark. Oh. Well, I squash squash a state to the party because he went to the top of a mountain to get his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Okay. <laughs> then I think uh Squash is wearing It realizes his shirt is missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Squash. Oh, there's that panic. Ten minutes before the party, Squash is like, okay, I better get my shirt off. Oh my god, where's my shirt? Guys, what did you do with this? <laughs> The, we we used it to get Demi to the top of the mountain. You did what with my nice shirt? <laughs> you you were part of that. It was her idea. <laughs> I can't believe you guys <laughs> let her do that. All right, sorry. Uh, do, do you need a spare set of clothes? I think I might have a nice fancy you, shirt. You're just gonna have to roll it up a lot for you. <laughs> Exactly. It's gonna look. It's look, gonna look like a trash bag on me. If you want me to wear a trash bag, I will wear a trash so bag. So what we gotta do? Uh, Zoltana like grabs out her uh, one of her axes and he goes, <laughs> "Okay, so here's the plan. We get Balance's extra yes, fancy please, shirt. Chop off we... my hand so people will not be able to notice the ugly shirt I'll be wearing. <laughs> no, we make no, it I, into a crop oh. top. Crop tops are super fashionable. All right, you'll look super cute. 
It's Oh my god, we're crop tops back in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna like grab the shirt from balance and immediately unhack it into a crop a, a really cute fancy button down crop top for, for squash. It's, no, Zoltana, fine fine cuts. It's it's elvish silk. Fine cuts, hack. not hack. hack. No, not hacking. No, it's just you're going to fray the ends. Oh god. <laughs> As you see this unbelievably expensive shirt being hacked down, you make as good a job as it is possible to make. And squash, you do have like a. It's not. It's a. It will cover the top half of your body. Okay, let me put it like this: Squash would never wear something that shows off a lot of skin because he is ashamed mm-hmm. of himself. So oh. let's roll this very very funny idea back. I had to Google what the fuck a crop top was. Oh, okay. Sorry, language. No, uh, I would. No, it's okay. I can take this shirt and I can cut it down so that it fits your torso. <laughs> Do you have Kate, something that uh, covers the torso? Um, Casey, you're it's, not going to bully me weave. into wearing Calafian's shirt. <laughs> Squaws is going to wear his like more like more nicer uh, clothes, but he's definitely wearing his nice new magical uh, cloak, which he is uh-huh. using very much to hide and cover like the fact that he's not wearing very nice clothes. Okay, yeah, like that's, you can get away with wearing a that. cloak. <laughs> you can get away with wearing a cloak to hide, like the maybe not quite so up to snuff shirt. Um, yeah, Fine. okay. I'm going to take <laughs> Laffian's extra shirt and make it into a button down crop top for Zoltana. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and Zoltana definitely it. had a different one. She just really wanted to do it. Yeah. So, so let, 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 Squash goes, nah, I'm good. I'm going to wear something else. And Sultana's like, well, I've already got the shirt in one hand and an axe in the other. So. <laughs> Why <laughs> <don't hold> on? <laughs> and Mama did not raise no fool. I'm about to make a crop top. <laughs> I fucking love it. Okay, so you have like basically your, your first, I guess, like royal piece of clothing is what Sultana has. I love it. Okay, uh, I guess Laffian, what are, are you? Are you dressing up for the party? I don't have to have... dress up for shit because my armor changes how I want it to. That is true. That so is very Laffian, true. Laffian, just with a, th- a flick of a thought, uh, his armor changes, and he's essentially wearing um, like what he would wear to like a noble's wedding or uh, a noble's mm-hmm. birthday party in Elvish society. So I'm picturing like that very fine. Um, like nobleman's robe or like a uh, jacket coat sort of thing where like it goes mm-hmm. like almost all the way down to the floor uh, with like that gold filigree. It's probably like that dark brownish red um, to denote like he would have been an inquisitor. I freaking love it. Um, he's also wearing the monocle that he definitely didn't steal. <laughs> and for flavor, he's wearing that anti spider brooch that he definitely did not steal. Oh yeah, it's definitely no spiders at this party. <laughs> I'm making sure there's no spiders at this party. No spiders in the fruit punch I, bowl. I appreciate that, thank you. Um, <laughs> always thinking of your DM. Don't make it. Don't make it RP spiders. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he, he's wearing okay, that whole awesome. get up. He's looking looking real regal, and also bit. ready for a fight if needed. <laughs> <laughs> it's still armor. Uh, Aimer is wearing like the nicest dress that she owns. Um, it's kind of like this dark greenish, like almost velvety kind of feel to it, and it's got like you know, it's just kind of more strappy than it is like sleeved. So, I with a, it. like that belt thing around the waist. I imagine so Aim that is her tail like, can like flick out the back. Every like five <laughs> seconds, you see Aim is like reaching over, pulling a strap back up, and then it slides yeah, like, down. She's like, <sighs> I can also tell you, you wearing those kind of dresses though, they're so fucking annoying. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's that's her. Um, she's she's my enemy at this party. Um, Ral. <laughs> um, after Ral's conversation with Bogram, he's kind of all bloody up and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. so like Ral melts his clothes, he's not going to be able to change into anything else. <laughs> but he he gets himself looking presentable again, and uh, irons all calms hoodie. down. And yeah, <laughs> and I think yeah, Ral is. Just 
spending time hanging out with Caden, but he's not going to change clothes or anything. He's just going to make himself look more presentable because that's kind of how I've had to go about it forever. There's no reason to ruin a pair of clothes today unless someone just happened to like throw some at me. That's what Rob would do. <laughs> okay. He would just Fair enough. make himself not look as terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, let's let's go with the idea that the four of you are kind of like together-ish. Ama is kind of like uh, chatting with Taylor. So we'll we'll leave them over there to do the uh, their thing. Um, and like Caden is kind of like hanging out with the four of you. Um, and he kind of like looks over at, at, at Taylor, so she's like way too tall for <laughs> an eight-year-old girl. Um, and he he just kind of looks at the four of you and he says, "I, I and I never really asked. Did do any of you have?" Have kids? I feel like Laughing was probably sipping on uh, Elvish wine or something, and just immediately spit takes. Well, I, I know, I know you haven't, unless you, there were, you know, other sired kids that we don't know of. But um, audio podcast, my friend. Nope, nope, nope. None of that. None of that, Caden. I <laughs> nope. I um only just. <laughs> became an adult when you know that whole thing and uh that's not a conversation that has been had with <clears throat> nope. i think the nope. answer you're looking for lafian is no no oh, yes yes oh, no, i mean no yes quite <laughs> he just starts sipping the wine <laughs> sipping the wine a little harder <clears throat> uh no and, any squashings no. No. No squ no squashings. No. No kids here. How are did, you holding up? Did, are you okay? He looks over at Talius again and looks back at the four of you and he says I I don't think I'm doing all that okay. What do you she, mean? You look healthy. Healthier? Well, I'm not dead, thanks to the four of you. <laughs> and he kind of like smiles. It's just hard. She's supposed to be eight. I, I know people say kids grow up fast, but... <laughs> yeah, not that fast. Yeah. I... I want to help her get, get young, but I... It's dangerous to do, and I don't don't have a lot of time to, to do it. Is there any way we I can just... help? Emil said I need to go to the st stalking. Mm -hmm. I guess I would need a hand getting there. <clears throat> Um, we're, <clears throat> um, we're going there soon. Uh, so we could probably, Caden, I don't know you, but you seem to mean a lot to them. So I want they... to help you. He, he smiles as he looks at like Laffy and Ryan and Zoltana and he's looking at Zoltana. You see him like smile quite broadly and he says that they mean a lot to me. You mean a lot. Could take you with us. It'd be like old time's sake. But maybe without the me getting super, super old when we go to a diff different plane, yeah? Well, no, no bonding marks or anything this time around, yeah? Yeah, that would be be nice. I don't know who fucking thought that was a good idea. Oh wait, yes I do. It was Lindren. Lindren, <laughs> fuck that guy. Of course, just looking around for Lindren. <laughs> oh, he better not be. <laughs> he better not be. <laughs> it's gonna be a second I, birthday I would, party I ruin. I would appreciate that. Is there anything I can do? For you, for a while, I'm. Do you know when you might go? Um, still a point of debate. It's not gonna be the first one. I can tell you that right now, Lafian. Um, first, 
What? We have a bunch of things we have to do. Uh, and th the thing in the stocking is I need to give some people a little bit more time to research before I feel comfortable doing what we have to do. I, he nods. I tried to take an hourglass and I couldn't, but it was worth a shot. And uh, I, so I don't really know how we're going to have the sand here. Do we just need sand? I, what do you put it in? Do we need something special? To um, put it in? Squash is like looking at uh, <laughs> Caden, like, well? Yeah, he's he like he's like beginning to like severely like rub the side of his head, like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all stuck. But Roll, you, you know, there's the saying, most people have a foot yeah. in the grave. You just take a swan dive straight into it, I swear. <laughs> Did you try to steal from death again? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I feel like this m might be out of my, my, my league. Um. I'm a specter. I specters have hourglasses. You're, I'm a specter. you're a specter in training. But... <laughs> So, like, it would have been weird, like, why can't I see it? Why can't... Well, you know I how mean, you're not, not supposed to, like, step on your boss's toes, really? Like, you want to be out of their way they and make their life easier in terms of work? <laughs> you're you're doing the opposite. Going, I wasn't going to do anything. I just wanted that hourglass. It's fine. <laughs> you were toying <laughs> with powers beyond you. I wasn't you. going to do anything. I just the specter with an hourglass. That's... Nothing to see. <laughs> At this point, um, Elise comes over and like taps Sultana on the shoulder. Yeah, what's up? Hey! And she gives like Sultana like a really big hug, um, and like Tuck comes over and like like does that like really hearty like slap on the back. Um, it doesn't really push you forward because he's not as strong as you. Um, <laughs> Roll an arm strike. And it just like yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you could key point this, but he's not going to. Um, <laughs> stunning strike, surprise. <laughs> um, and Elise says, "Like, how are you? How are you doing? I, we haven't seen you in ages, and you look good. I love the crop top. Thank you. I made it myself <coughs> out of one of Balance's shirts. <laughs> Do they know you're a goddess? <laughs> this isn't. I don't think you ever told them. Okay, I'm doing okay. You know, uh, working on my." Uh, Goddess training shit and uh I'm sorry. Looking on you one now? Uh goddess training? Oh, did I not tell you? Um so I talked to like the goddess of paperwork or whatever the fuck. And uh <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. <laughs> and then you like Tuck just put, puts one hand up, it's like There's a goddess of paperwork. Yeah. Paperwork. Listen. <laughs> As in, like, red tape, paperwork, scrolls, contract. There's a goddess of that. There is someone to blame for all of this. Bureaucracy, yes. one might call it, yeah. yes. Okay. That changes things, maybe. You're going to be a goddess. Yeah. Of... Bloody vengeance. <laughs> you see them both, like, look at each other. And Tuck just takes like half a step back as if he's worried, but at least just like raises one hand up in the air, like high five. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. She high fives her and she's like, Yeah. I mean, what else would I be the goddess of, really, right? I um I mean, do we do we call you uh your 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 godliness? Uh I can I just call you Zoltana? Yeah, you can call me Zoltana. I need to know everything. I want to write everything about your story sorry laughing i want to write everything about your story of becoming a goddess this is this is huge yeah and oh and odette's a goddess now okay you're gonna need to tell us literally <laughs> everything and tuck's like i don't need to know literally everything i just need well congratulations this is terrifying <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like awkwardly around um, zoltana's like zoltana's God. like tuck you out <laughs> You don't have to be scared. Of, like I don't know why you'd be scared of me. Like the, it's just me. I, I I'm not gonna strike I bloody know. vengeance on you. You're like one of my best friends. I know, but but um, 
it's just a bit much, I guess. Um, it's very on brand for her. You're like a goddess, and I mean Adet, obviously, because Adet. Uh, but I, I guess, um, <laughs> congratulations, Sultana. <laughs> uh, any anything I can do? <laughs> he looks like really nervous. Uh, whereas at least just like got her arm around your shoulder and she's just like grinning broadly. Uh, I mean, like if you know anyone who's uh, looking to pledge themselves to a goddess of bloody vengeance, let me know because I'm looking. I need more <laughs> followers so that I can actually attain godhood. <gasps> Sultana, guess who's really good at talking to the masses? And she like points two thumbs oh, at her. Elise, you and I are going to go in the corner right now and I... have a conversation because you're going to be my new propaganda minister. <laughs> no, 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 not propaganda. What's what's the nice word for this? Um, I will be your people relationship manager. Yeah. No, that's somehow and worse. Will... That is worse, please. <laughs> Herald. Head of people <laughs> operations. Harold. Harold. Pro- thank you. See, this is why we keep a prince around. I will be your herald. I will be the herald of Zoltana, goddess of bloody vengeance, there when you need her. <gasps> Glad to be I'm of so assistance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Humans relation right. manager. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, but actually, like my my old job, they our HR department was called people operations, which is somehow worse than that. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> PO. No, I hate it. <laughs> she was the pole. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Um. Okay, Zoltana, I would like you to roll two d twenty. Twenty two. After this evening, thanks to Elise's renewed efforts at life, basically just going out there and talking to everyone, you will have gained 22 new followers. Nice. What are you at right now? Um, 581 plus 22. So that would be 603. 603. Yeah. Uh, there are more coming today because you have also handed over some of your godly, god, uh, goddessly duties to your receptionist. Um, but he won't add very much today because he was riding through the night, uh, riding through the day, I guess. There was going to be a god of machines, but they determined that his followers were all bots. So, Boo! Boo. Boo, I love it. Boo, I love it. Also, Ron would have been first on that list, god damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, you spend like a good hour chatting with uh, Elise, and Elise has these really good ideas on how to talk to people, on what it is that she could say to get people to follow you. And she definitely grills down these are some of the nitty gritty of like how you run things. Like, hey, what happens at a wedding when people get married? Um, and obviously, as we've established, you always punch the priest at a wedding. That was th- yeah. that was a thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that black and red are the colours and she immediately like makes notes on how she's going to change her attire and Tuck is in the corner just like shaking his head of like what, what is my life become <laughs> terrified <laughs> as he fully realises that despite his devotion to Ormata he's going to be on this wild ride um, <laughs> it's not too late for a divorce it's never too late uh, they're not married no, they're not, not married. yet could have fooled me but you know um, who's going to marry them when they do get yet. married <laughs> me and you know what's going to have know- to happen <laughs> Is Tuck's gonna have to punch me? <laughs> He's gonna punch the prince. <laughs> <laughs> they both have to like simultaneously punch. If they both land a punch at the same time, that is a good omen for a wedding. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, she also drills down into like, um, like you know, she basically asks the questions that you want people to know about your religion. Like, how does this work? Where do you draw the line on that? How much bloody is too much bloody? How much bloody is not enough bloody? Like, she drills down. She has so many questions. Uh, all right, cool. I love it. Uh, I love it. Okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I sidetracked myself. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> One day, I'm kind of all, excited. <laughs> one day we'll have a temple for you in Belagood. Just give me a few years. Yes, clearly. I have to. Um. <sighs> yeah, when Zoltana comes back from having uh, the conversation about uh, 
spreading the good word. Um, <laughs> hey, Zoltana? Uh, yeah, Raul, what's up? I challenged Bogram to a fight, and I don't know if that's vengeance or forgiveness, but I hope it's both. And I don't know how to make that work. Is that going to, am I, is that right? Am I on, is this what, am I doing this right? Yeah, I think you are. You know, let me ask you something. Are you, Mm -hmm. how do you feel? Why are you doing this? Because... Because even though he hurt us, he didn't want to, and he was trying to do the right thing for everybody. So, I can't help it, but it feels like I should try. Do you think that fighting him is going to help you move on? I don't know what else to do. I want to punch in. So it would feel good at the time. Have you set rules for the fight? We're not going to kill each other. That's, we hope, I hope. Then I think you're doing the right thing. Because if you think that, if you feel that getting in some punches is going to make you feel good about this and may, and is going to be a good enough vengeance, but you want to make sure that he stays alive, that sounds like you're doing the exact right thing to me. I think it's, it's, it's all very complex and complicated. And I think it, your mileage may vary on, on how vengeance is going to make you feel, but at the end of the day, if if this ends up not, if you're in the middle of the fight and you are like, this doesn't feel good, you can stop it. So you can't stop murder, mur- you know, in the middle of murder, because once you've started murdering someone, it's kind of like, you know, kind of hard to not, kind of hard to unmurder them. But fighting someone is is a lot easier to stop, I think, if especially if it's the kind of fight you're doing. I don't think I'm going no, I don't think I'm going to try to murder him. I should, but I just don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if I'm going to feel better or not. I mean I will. But then say I lose, you know, am I still going to feel good after losing? You're not going to lose, Raul. Raul? Are you praying to me right now as the goddess of bloody vengeance? Are you asking my advice as the goddess of of vengeance? Um, It's related to all that, yes. Ilmater would probably tell you I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay. Well then, even though you are not one of my followers you are my friend and you are praying to me in my duty as goddess so I am going to give you a boon like I do my followers for the fight (laughs) and I'm going to give you I'm going to give you one use of hold person for your fight okay thanks um, Raul goes to hug you. Um, Aww. It's just hard to figure out what to do, you know, because uh, what am I going to do? Tell him to go away? Yes. He's helping Ama with something. <laughs> Once he's done helping Ama, you tell him that you never want to see his face around here again. You are absolutely entitled to do that. And... But is that the right thing to do? It doesn't matter if it, you know, right. What is the right thing is super different in different situations. 
And it is absolutely the right thing for you, for your peace of mind and your mental health to tell him you never want to see him again. But he is hurt too. That doesn't, that's not your responsibility. His hurt isn't your responsibility. He killed Ama and he really betrayed you as a friend know, and as I a, know. you know, it's, your hurt, your hurt is beyond his responsibility at this point. And it is okay for you to back away from him as a friend and as a person and tell him that you never want to see him again. Just because he's hurt doesn't mean that you have to be delicate about your own feelings around him. Raul, you do know there are things people do that is beyond forgiveness. There are some people out there that don't deserve to be forgiven. You don't owe him anyway, anything. He threw it all away when he betrayed you, when he hurt you. But if you find it in your heart to forgive him, well, you're a better person than most of us. Didn't he have to, though? He didn't want to do it, and I can feel that. I believe that. I don't think he's going to hurt her again. Bogram wasn't always terrible. He wasn't terrible. That's the thing. He did help me for a long time. On his own. Then beat the shit out of him and keep him at an arm's length forever. I'll, I'll if start, you want to, I'll start if you, with beating the shit out of him. <laughs> if you want to be his friend, that's yours. I know that he could hurt me again and hurt Ama again. But I have to believe that my friends wouldn't do that kind of thing, right? Or I'm always just scared. That's fair, Ral. So Zoltana goes in and gives you a hug. Uh, another hug. At this point, um, you feel like some human arms wrap themselves around the back of you, Ral. And you just hear, oh, everyone's hugging Ral. It's ha- Rock Hal. Rock, hug <laughs> Ral time. Yeah, Ral and then, like, tries you... to like wipe away the conversation. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, hugs Taylor's back. Yeah, like she comes over and gives everyone like a big hug. And she's like, um, hi. Hi. Hello. Do you like my, I decided that pigtails were too like, um, Childish, so I wanted to. Do you do you like it? And she like starts like playing with her brain, like yeah, she's doing it. Like bits of it are just like beginning to fall out. She clearly has no idea how to like keep this maintained. It looks very nice. How are you doing presents? Is there like a table we're supposed to drop it off, or do you receive them? Uh, like her eyes go like really wide. It's like, um, uh, no, um, people have just been giving them to me like all day. Like Mr. Carson um, gave me one when I got to work this morning and daddy gave me like this like necklace and she like reaches in and she pulls out like this little like uh, silver rose on a necklace and, like, and um, daddy gave that to me when I woke up this morning and said I have to keep it on forever and ever. Actually, he didn't. I said I'd keep it on forever and ever. So um, <laughs> did you got me presents. <laughs> she looks like really like sheepish. <laughs> yeah, uh... Go um, ahead, you you started with it. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I was just <clears throat> trying to pick up a subject matter that was a little less dire. Um, yeah, uh, me and Raul uh, worked on a little thing for you. It's a little, like, kind of board game from Empty Shallows. Now, uh, <gasps> Squash is going to, like, pick up a little pouch that I'm assuming we put all the pieces in. Uh, and he you lays store it your out. minis in a pouch, you heathen? Well, <laughs> they're literally square pieces of wood, you <laughs> Fucking Philistine! <laughs> no, they've been beautifully carved. Okay, stop it. <laughs> don't disrespect don't, the don't, minis like don't, that. Don't yell at my baby. I don't want to risk it. <laughs> okay, uh, Karen. <laughs> and Squash just empties out the bag. And what follows is probably a very nerdy fifteen minutes as Squash tries to explain the rules of the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he like as, looks as up, she's learning, what did they? Call, what, uh, what the hell did we call it? It was something mallet, right? Strife mallet. Strife um. mallet, yeah. <laughs> I'm, okay, great. I'm, I'm teaching Taylor's strife mallet. Um, uh, 4,000. 5,000. Uh, strife mallet, 4,000. 5, <laughs> 5, uh, 
And after about 15 minutes, Quas realizes that like <laughs> nobody's following the rules anymore. And he's just like, oh, or you can just, you know, uh, play soldiers with them and just have them like fight and uh, no but but that's not how they work you said that this one only has a range of three and that it has a defense of four and that it beats that one on a seven. Oh my god <laughs> laughing's like holding a piece like you said this one's called the god emperor i like this one <laughs> the holy <laughs> the god emperor the holy god she, she like <laughs> she like stands up and um she like uh, she kind of like goes over and gives like squash like a hug like she's like Oh, um, I'm sorry. I forgot that you don't like. Um, uh, maybe a handshake. And she puts her hand out. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Ralph. The pieces are really pretty, even though they're so bloodthirsty. I love it. Thank you. And she like gives Ralph like a really big hug. Ralph hugs. It's okay. Don't be sad. Everyone's just happy today. I'm not sad. We're just trying to figure out how to. Get better. Uh, she kind of like pulls back a little bit and she looks like really seriously into her eyes. She says, um, it's just a slow process. It just does that time thing. And um, I overheard you saying that you wanted to beat Mr. Bogram up. And um, Raw's Ra like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, she says, and she says, and if you want to do that, then I understand. Because Auntie Amy seems really nice and... Um, Mr. Bergen seems really nice too sometimes, so um, it's okay for things to be complicated. Like this game. This game isn't complicated nearly as much. <laughs> she like gestures at Strife Mallet 5000. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> uh, she collects all the pieces up uh, and, and she's like excitedly talking to like Rondi and, and Zach about the game who both look a little bit confused. Oh no. Um, <laughs> They're like, I don't understand this game. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, she kind of like wanders over to Zoltana and she kind of like uh, looks at her and she says, um, do you want to play this game with me? Um, it's all about war and fighting, I think. No, no, it's about peace. We're fighting for peace. We're going to get in oh, so much I'm sorry. trouble. It's about, it's about ensuring peace with mini figures. <laughs> By destroying and the Uncle heretics. Made them. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like, maybe you could play this with me when you come back from whatever it is that you're doing, and then maybe I'll understand a little bit better on how to play it if you want. I'm into it. Let's do it. Awesome. Um, That would be really cool. Um, Maybe when you come back from wherever it is that you're going, Um, maybe we could set, like, an hour or two. And then she looks over at Squash to see if an hour is about the right amount of time to play this Oh, this Squash game. definitely does like a... <laughs> like he's like... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, maybe like a couple of hours. Um, if it's not too busy for you, yeah. um, that would be cool. Um, uh, I, I'm going to go in and dance um, some. Now, do you guys want to come dance with us? Hold on, you have other gifts besides. Yeah, Zoltana like pulls out like a very poorly wrapped dagger. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna guess that's a dagger. <laughs> Who told you? <laughs> Damn, you're really good at this guessing game. <laughs> she she laughs like she she knows you're messing with her. Um, she takes the dagger out of the the poorly wrapped, I guess, um, and she sees the colors and her eyes just go like super wide. And you see Caden standing behind her, just like, what the hell did you give my daughter? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Caden, she what's looks up? At, you know, how's it going? <laughs> He's like, well, what did you do? <laughs> um, wow. Um, thank you, Auntie Anna. Um, I don't have a um. And she kind of like puts it on the floor and she like reaches down and gives you a big hug. And she says, um, uh, I think someone here can teach me how to use this so I don't accidentally cut myself. And um, try not to tell daddy, but I think it's really cute. There's this little crown on there. Did you know it had a little crown on it? Yeah, I made it for you. <gasps> you made it? Yeah. Oops. Wow. This is so cool. Um, Thank you. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to be like, sensible and grown up with it because I'm a grown up now and I'll try not to accidentally cut myself or stab someone or um yeah thank you yeah don't don't stab anyone unless unless 
they, you know, like attacking you with something. But, you know, mm-hmm. I want you to have a little bit of like last defense or something. Um, I think every everybody should know how to use a knife. So <gasps> maybe I could keep it in my boot and it can be my boot knife. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we could find you someone to like kind of modify your boot so you could keep it in there. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Carson's really good at making clothes things, so maybe I'll ask him to make it for me. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, And she kind of like, she runs off and she like excitedly, but with great respect, shows the knife to her friends. Um, Like she's not cutting anything. She's not letting anyone touch it. Like she's being like super careful with it. And then the next second, like she's put it carefully on the table and is running around like a mad child again. Um, She seems very happy with her gifts. You guys are the best. <laughs> okay. I, I well, realized I realized as I was doing that, I was breaking <clears throat> my head. Yes, you uh-huh. were. So sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a little too into it, I think. My bad. <laughs> you started because you were pretending that she was playing with her braids. And yeah, then you never stopped. Yeah. And then I didn't stop. Yeah. I might be a little into that sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's see who else. Uh, if you guys want to speak to anyone else, then let me know. If not, I'm going to scroll through my list of things the NPCs are doing that you should know about list. I still have to give her mine. Yeah, you can totally, uh, like, she's like, you know, you'll bump into her again at some point during the evening. Like, she would spent 15 minutes with Squash and Rao learning how to play Strife Mallet 5000, what the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you can definitely find her at any point during the evening. Um, at some point, Laughing just finds her and... Taylor, I I wanted to make sure I gave you my gift as well. Cool. Um, what is it? So it's not. And, um, no, <clears throat> thank you. You're you're most welcome, young princess, and does like a bow okay, towards now what her. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> so and he reaches into the bag of holding and uh, pulls out one of the anti death coins mm-hmm. and puts it into her hand and says. It's not quite as extravagant as a dagger, and it's not as, uh, and it's not quite as fun as uh, a, a game. But this is a very special magical coin. Um, keep it on you, please. It'll, it'll protect you. Okay. Um. So it's like super magic. It's very powerful magic. Hmm. And you see her like squint her eyes a little bit and you see her fingers move and you see her mum, you can hear her mumbling something and her eyes just go through a kaleidoscope of colours as she's looking at it. She's like, oh, wow, this is really cool. Thank you. Everybody here cares, cares about you, Taylor. We want to make sure that you stay safe. Well, I'm going to do my best to keep everyone safe too. Um. I have a, I have that thing that I'm doing, and I've got almost everybody's signatures now. So, shh. Okay, shh. It's no problem. <laughs> you keep up the good work, all right? I will. He goes for a um, fist, fist pound. pound. Yeah, she does like the fist bump. It's very awkward, though. Like, she's clearly more of a hugger than a fist bump. Um. <laughs> I'm, I'm still getting used to the whole hugging thing. It, it's not something... A hundred years of uh, nobility is very hard to forget. I understand. Not everybody has like lots of hugging in them. And but nobility doesn't fist bump though. No, that's <laughs> cop, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> cops that are undercover trying to act cool. That's your no, that's undercover the, the, the cop awkward, thing. The awkward uncle thing. <laughs> fist bump. <laughs> yeah, we're cool. I, I'll make bump. sure. I'll make sure that I keep this on me all the time and I will figure out, maybe I can keep it next to my boot knife. That would be really cool. As long as it doesn't fall out. like slide it into her boot (laughs) and then she just like goes back to the party with everyone else. (laughs) I found the coin. Uh, No, Rolf, put that coin back. (laughs) Rolf. It's like the coin that we have. It was just on the ground. You already have one. What? I don't have one. Everybody had one. Do I? Yeah, everybody got one de- uh, anti-death coin, and then Laffian kept two because he's a squishy motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> oh! And well, then I'll the give first mine to Ama gave it away next. to a child. Yeah, I'm gonna give mine to Ama when I <laughs> listen. Ama, I didn't realize that I had one. This is Taylor's we're talking about. You understand if shit, hey, anything bad happens to Taylor, the entire fan base comes for us. <laughs> we'll riot. <laughs>
Right. There will be As no more TLD. <laughs> no. I'm going to give Ama that when I see her next. Aww. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, like, Aim is at the party. Obviously, she's hanging out with people and spending a lot of time chatting with you as well. So you can definitely give her the coin. Um, she looks at it a little strangely <laughs> as you put it in her hand. <laughs> oh, this matches my scales. Just keep it on you at all times. Is it important? Could be. I hope it's not. <laughs> You don't want to tell me what it's for, do you? It could keep something bad from happening if that were ever to be the case, but... Hopefully no, yes. Hopefully... (laughs) Hopefully you are fine. I... I will try to make sure I never have to use it. She smiles. And uh, she kind of like puts it like realize she doesn't really have a pocket and just like puts it into like her her belt and then realize that's not going to work and she's like I'm going to go put this where I think because I don't want to lose it um, thank you take it with you wherever I will I promise um, a little bit later after you have done gift exchanges coin movements um also, it means you don't have to put your coin down when you QC now. Um, <laughs> You're right. This is how I clear my inventory. <laughs> Just anyway, give it here, away. Anyway, here's all the things um, I found. Bye. <laughs> uh, a little bit later. Um, fuck it. Um, uh, kind of a little bit later in the party when everyone is dancing and boogieing away. Um, like, Taylor has most of you on the dance floor at some point, as does, like, Zach and Rondi. I'm and, on the edge of the dance Kaden floor such, because like, I have a tail. And that, that'll get huh? stepped on. I have a tail. No, it's fine. Get stepped like, on. everyone just gives you a little bit more room. There are, there are, you know, there are some, <laughs> like, tieflings here as well as, oh, okay. you know, some of the yeah, other that's fair. There are a dragonborn. lot of taily things here, aren't yeah. there? Okay. There are a lot of tailed people in this that's room, fair. so don't worry. <laughs> there are all the dragonborn kids that have been, uh, like, living down here and being looked after. There are tieflings from Savras's army. There are tabaxis. Like, there are probably more tailed people here than not. Um, wow. That's a first. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of folks here. Um, about a mm, couple of hours before midnight, um, you just uh, Zoltani, you feel a, a tap on your shoulder, and standing before you is two people that you recognise. One being Damas, and the other being Demi. Hey, what? Hold on, what? Bloodiness. Hi. Demi. Uh, he he nods and smiles, <laughs> and Demi just like waves like frantically. Demi's still wearing basically the same thing as she was last time that you saw her, which is like the uh, basically armor. Um, and she just like smiles at you and just like waves. Hi. Just uh, thought we'd swing by and say happy birthday to the little one. And hello. Uh, I'm. I've answered a few of your calls, I guess. Oh, good. Well, I'm- I got one from Rawl that he answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got one from Rawl. I recognized his voice, but you seem to answer to him, so I, I left him to it. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't say that. Thanks for taking care of that for me. I appreciate it. Um, Welcome. How how are you doing other than that? Yeah, I'm all right. Just trying to keep my spirits up, you know. Doing the goddess's work, and he gestures at you. <laughs> and uh, you know. Demi, how are you doing? I'm okay, mostly. Like, I'm just busy doing things. Like, I managed to get hold of something very, very cool, which I'm going to need to give to all of you. Well, actually, me and Emil and the book are going to need to give to all of you because there's a whole thing that we need to do to, like, get you to where you're going. <sighs> wow, I should not be speaking so much around so many people. I'm sorry. It's fine. Uh, hi, Demi. Hi. Um, I have something of yours, actually, um, uh, because I, I um, uh, this is going to be really weird with a bunch of people. I was hoping to find you when you weren't around a bunch of people because, like, the thing I need to give you look, will look super weird. Um, yeah. Why don't? I've been Can we just, like, go, 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 like, just back out here for a minute? And, like, Damaz is clearly giving his sister a side eye and, like, a shake of his head. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, sure. Get uh, it. Get it, Squash. I've been I've been practicing magic the right way and it's going really well. 
I can see. Like, you are, like, there is so much magic. Like, she's walking at the same time. She's assuming you're going with. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. she's not making any. <laughs> no, no, of is, like, leaving like, the table. I can see. Like, He's bragging yeah, at this like, point. <laughs> <laughs> you were, like, covered in, like, so much more magic than you were. The last, I mean, to be fair, the last time I saw you, I couldn't actually see much of you because I was, got, like, in a, in, a, in a panic and that wasn't that wasn't great. Anyway, uh, I'm super sorry. Um, I didn't mean to do that. You know that, right? I didn't, I didn't mean to try and kill you. Well, oh, at least are you technically. No, actually, that's what we're I, I know that. It's. I know you don't hate me. No. It's the don't. only way um, to cast that thing. So I, I know it wasn't intentional. No. Um, so, like, my world magic knows the things that I know, and sometimes I learn from it, sometimes it learns from me, and um, that's the first time it's ever done it like that, and I think it might have been the God's Dream. Um, I'm just hoping that you're not using it, because I kind of need to. Um, no, off it. Okay, good, because that makes you learning magic. Is it like, show me the thing. To, no, actually, don't get distracted, Demi, don't get distracted. Um, so I knew that the party thing was happening today. That's not actually why I'm mean, not because of the party. It's because of you guys, actually, because you need to get to a, a place, I assume. And like, well, I had some free time between what I was doing and what I'm going to be doing in a few days. Um, and I bought your shirt. And she hands over your formal shirt from earlier. It was supposed to be a surprise, but you mentioned it first. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you motherfuckers. Uh, Squash just kind of receives it kind of smilingly. And he has just this like big grin on his face. Like he's just happy. Uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that you would probably want that. Um, a, a bit yeah. late, but you know, uh, it's the thought that counts, right? That's the saying. Yes. I'm hoping so. I mean, there are a million thoughts about this shirt because last time you wore that, um, she gets like suddenly really red in the face. But that doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, water under the yeah, bridge. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, do you, do you, uh, okay. So do you want to do the businessy thing first, or do you want to do like the 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 the, the not businessy thing first? Because uh, I have so much to talk to you about. Okay, I'm assuming uh, business stuff requires the rest of the party, right? Yes. Mm, let's do the business stuff but first we... and then enjoy the rest of the evening. Or do you think the business stuff is going to color the rest of the evening? Mm, maybe, because I don't exactly know how much trouble I'm going to have after we've done the businessy thing, because I don't exactly know how that's going to... Well, you know, like... Let's go see if we can get some wine and have a seat with the, the group. Just chat. You've been over all over okay. the world and the the existence recently. Oh my god, I have been like freaking everywhere in this like. <laughs> so like you don't understand like the physical plane is so pretty and there's so much going on and I've had to see so much and I've been walking across like basically everything. Like Grimsh has been like, yeah, we got power through this and they're like, I'm really tired, but he's like so in control of like making sure I make sure I eat properly and I drink properly and that I'm getting here and there and oh, the things I could show you when the things I could show you would be cool but that's not a let's go hang out with everyone else so this is way less awkward um i <laughs> assume kind of squash like... was already guiding her back to the group at that point <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> I, i'm assuming um, she says way less awkward looks up and sees the rest of them <laughs> yeah way less awkward hi guys hello hi how are you doing <coughs> um, <clears throat> sorry might have been a little he's, bit he's not holding down his drink very well <laughs> Sultana's like talk has been like talking to Damas this whole time about like all the stuff she's been, she was like do, talking about with Elise and she's like yeah and then they punch me and uh, then they marry. <laughs> he he nods. Um, he's like, I'll get it. I get it. So at a funeral, <laughs> the entire family punches the priest or the paladin. Yeah. Or the other option right, is right. there's an all-out brawl. I, that's a really good way to unlock some of those feelings, like in there. And he like taps his chest. That's smart. You're a smart woman. I can already hear ballroom blitz playing in the background. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> well, I get it. I get it. Oh, uh, I should probably spend some time speaking with Elise then. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> and we got to get you that thousand. Yeah, so close. Right? So close. Mm -hmm. Like, I, excuse me, four, four hundred more to go. Yeah, that's not a lot. We can get that. Yeah. Thank you for answering me the other day, by the way. Of course. Always. 
he doesn't really say much as Demi comes back. He's like about to open his mouth again and he's like, nah, he's going to sit and watch this shit show that's about to happen. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. um, how are you? Who are you talking to? Demi. Okay. I'm doing okay. It's fine. Great. Everything's great. Wonderful. Lovely. Um, how are you guys doing? Like, so wait. Actually, I, I don't want to. We have to talk like a businessy thing afterwards because there's a thing I need to give you and Emil and like Soren's over there somewhere. So, or oh, the book at least anyway. They're, they're over there and they're doing a thing and we can chat about it later. Um, but how how are you finding things? Like anything changing? Anything cool happening with you? Mm, yeah. Um, um. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know my thing. Oh. Hmm? Right. So, Kythea, she is doing wonderful over in Kino. Lafian releases a breath he didn't realize he was holding for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I've been talking with Rowena a lot, and Rowena and Kythea are working like really heavily over in Kino. Like, Rowena's like wearing this ring, and she she looks kind of different now, and like she's like blending in best as she can so she, she can get the army through. And Kythea has been wonderful. She's been teaching her like the language, and Kythea is settling in. There was a bit of a thing she had with her brother, but they like, and they're not exactly cool, but they're, they're getting over it. And she misses you. She told me to tell you that she misses you and that you just need to send her a message. And then like, she's trying to learn how to locate you. Like you sometimes locate her. And like, yeah, she's wanting to know that she was fine. And she misses you. I'm glad to hear it. I miss her as well. <laughs> oh, what, are, okay. what are they up to exactly over there right now? Are they silently infiltrating or? Yes. I thought they were marching a fucking army. The army is part way across the Olkath Isles right now. Okay. Like, just on the way. Um, like, we've been, well, like, Grimsh and I have been clearing, like, passages and letting people know that, hey, there's a thing going on. Please be good, quiet. Let these people through. There's a little bit of friction every now and then, but occasionally you're like, uh, an axe. Uh, and sh- as she's saying this, like, she makes her axe appear in her hand. Like, sometimes, it, like, you just have to, oops, uh, you just have to, like, summon <laughs> things and make people aware that, you know, sometimes a god is ordering you to do a thing, so you do a thing because, you know, respect. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you know what about Zoltana? Like, when you order people to, like, do vengeance, they do vengeance. That's how it should be. Um, but most of the time, it's just actually me telling them to back off. Um, What's that? Most people have been cool. Was that the literal, like, axe of grooms? I think that's an artifact. Uh, no, it is not the literal okay. axe of grooms. Okay. It's her, her axe. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering there for a second, like, if she's wielding one of his fucking artifacts. Uh... God, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. God, no. <laughs> grooms, no. So that's going well. Grooms, no. That's good. Um, we might yeah, actually they're have... doing... They're, they're... We, we might have to go over to Kino soon. Okay. Yeah. Among other places, yes. But the treaty's already been broken, so it's not going to be any problem for us. Good thing, somebody else. Yeah, it it got really broke over there. Um, so, like, Kathea was talking to people, and, like, they declared war, like, a day after we did. Like, somehow, there were, like, some people over there that shouldn't be over there, and it just got broke. Um, and, like... There was a whole thing involving, like, Kel's the one that was in control of your aunt um, mm-hmm. and um, uh, uh, Dacian, um, which reminds me, I need to go check on him in the butt. That doesn't really matter. Um, there was a whole thing and they exposed, like, this guy, this human um, that was over there hiding. And that was just like, yeah, so that's all broken. So Rowena just marching over there and talking to people, just kind of not really a, a good thing. But there are people who are kind of listening to it, so ah. that's kind of cool. Um, there was a human that broke the treaty. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Squash is just rolling his eyes. It's always humans putting their <laughs> dick where it doesn't belong. They're one of us, like, they're one of the more, like, <laughs> they're like us, the halflings. Like, we don't have such a political clout. Like, this is going to look really bad for our smaller ones. Like, So, Ral, how are things going on with you? <laughs> oh, complicated. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> you know. Complicated, but all right. Was that what you said? I'm sorry, I didn't hear of Aethel laughing yeah, his ass well, off. You know, like you just said, that gods ask people to do things and they just do them without thinking. And sometimes you have to try to forgive them for those things and all this, you know. When your boss tells you to do one thing, you do another. I'm a specter now. That's fun. Sometimes to think about. Sometimes it's scary. Yeah. Um. <laughs> 
like you see her eye goes like bright red at this point. Like, yeah, gods can be um no offense, Altana. Uh <clears throat> kind of terrifying. Uh and they don't always make sense. And I sometimes think that they may be bigger assholes than we are. <laughs> like on the grand scheme of things. So no no offense, Sultana. And and Adette is lovely. I I adore her. Um she says hi. Uh Yeah, no worries. It can be scary. I'm not offended. <laughs> okay, good. Because you are like one of my favorite people ever. Um I get it. Gods can be um awful. Anything I can do? Uh we need to get to Cicero. I was more um asking Raoul if there's anything I could do to help him with Oh right. Oh, so, his... yeah, we'll talk about that <laughs> later. Oh. Yeah, um, we I'm I'm gonna do the business thing later because I wanna do the the, the the catching up thing first. Um Raoul. No, I'm okay, I guess. I, I mean it's not just forgiving Bogram. I mean, and there's Miracle too, you know? Yeah. And the Miracle has been nice, but it's kind of just coming to an understanding that it was a couple of people suffering, so a lot of people didn't have to. It's just hard to understand from down here. At this point, you see that Demi is like looking down a little bit. Uh, she's not really meeting your eye as you say that. I get it. It's tough. Yeah. No, thank you. But I'm doing the best I can with circumstances. Well, of course you are. I mean, you've made a. Um, she kind of like gestures and like the part of your neck that the symbol was put on. It's like, you've clearly made strides towards doing things to make things better. And that's really good. And um, you're going to be okay. Like, Amy's back and she's happy. As happy as she appears, at least when I said hi to her just now. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you got her back. Thank you. I hope you're okay. I know this is hard yeah. too. For you. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this like super sucks, but um hopefully we don't have to do anything. Hopefully, like <sighs> so I'm really hoping that like they're gonna be out they and she points upwards, they are gonna be able to do their thing way before like Dachin and his asshole people arrive. So that will be like super good. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, two months, hoping. Um at least that's the idea anyway. I mean that's 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 what they think. I mean, I think I can make it quicker for them, but I'm not hundred percent sure, and to be fair, like Sentinel with magic could probably know more about me than I do, but you know. There's a lot of people doing the best they can, so. Yeah. We're, and you're doing the best you can. Right. In fact, you're probably doing way more. I mean, look at you. You're, you're surviving and you're thriving and you're kicking ass and you have plans and just really glad for you. Thanks. You're welcome. And if you need anything, then... um. Uh, well, actually, the thing I'm going to give you means that you could just let me know if you need something. Um, I may not always be able to answer because I may not always be here, here. Uh, I mean, I'll be on like this plane, but I won't necessarily be like in charge. Like, you know, just how things happen. Um, glad you're doing okay. I I'm going to go give Taylor a present. Um, I have a thing for her. Um, and it's hope that she likes it, I guess, kind of, maybe. Who knows? Um, bye. <laughs> and she kind of gets up and just like meanders off into the middle of the room. Dama still there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Squash is going to say to Laughing real quick, like, you do know she used to run a school, right? Right. Two, actually. Yeah, she might have some points and tips on how to run a school. I think Demi and I have made it abundantly clear that our ways of thinking are not necessarily in line. Mm, I acknowledge true. that her form of chaos is necessary, at times, <laughs> and my way of doing things is not necessarily always that. She, uh, she respects that order. It's a form of chaos, too. It's true. She kind of wishes sometimes she has that, but uh, but aren't we only sometimes kind of trying to learn everything though? You know, Demi, and you think differently, but that doesn't mean she's worse at showing someone something than you are. 
No, no, no. I, I don't mean that at all. I just mean that our ways of teaching are probably vastly different. But different things to learn, and aren't you all about learning everything? When I can. I also don't think a children's birthday party is the time to talk about uh, proper education. <laughs> <laughs> of course, getting up and like grabbing Damas and like pulling him what? away. What? Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess I'll. You bloody nest. So I guess I'll see the rest of you in a minute. What was what it? <laughs> you were I thought a, you were a on a halfling. different plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grabbing at his knee. Like, what the fuck is this? Get away, uh, I guess uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm in the presence of gods. Get away from me, squash. <laughs> <laughs> My goddess is literally sitting there. Don't take me away. Uh, Funny no, he image. didn't say that. He just, Funny like, I've never been so close Yay. to God in my life. <laughs> I am euphoric now, not because no phony drugs, but because I'm in the presence of my goddess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. That's a very weird pull, but okay. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Squash just pulls him away like a little bit like, uh, yeah, uh, different plane. Um, things changed, clearly. The plano hopping is starting soon, and it's definitely going to be something that Debbie's going to be talking to us about. Um, right. So... I may have a plan to give her a choice. He he doesn't exactly put a hand on your shoulder, but he does that motion and like make sure that the two of you are nowhere near the party, like much further, much closer to the mirror room where there's a lot less people. In fact, no one. He's like, you got to be careful around Sultana. Right. Why? She's a freaking goddess, and I don't exactly know what your plan is. I'm hoping it's not... <sighs> hoping it's not Kilgrimsh. What? No, no. But if it is, she might have to step in. No, I'm not gonna... No, it's about choice. <sighs> Kilgrimsh. All right. No, it's... No, well, that's my plan, but that ain't gonna happen. I'll be... Sorry, go. I'll be a different plan. We're going to Kino. We can talk to Kalos. Could you target one before (laughs) before we end you? (laughs) Listen, Amo will just steal a couple notes and they'll lose track of what the next one was, and then Grimsh will be gone. It'll be fine. (laughs) Amo's got stamps. She can do this, though. Okay, sorry. So I learned a little bit about uh, warlocks and how grooms and demi interact. Um, <sighs> Better luck than me, then. I've, I've had a lot of luck recently, really. Uh, honestly, I, I've fallen upon some very knowledgeable and powerful people, and they've given me a lot of information. And I believe I think I have it figured out. All right. What do you need me for? It might go sideways, and she might never talk to me again. Yeah, you and me both. I uh, was doing a little research down south. I've learned, well... (laughs) I've got a spell that can get rid of it. Him from her for a bit. Oh, I don't have the power to cast it. You have the exorcism spell. Yeah, how... Doesn't matter. Yeah. Very busy. Um, Squash is gonna, like, reach out his hand, and I do believe I have something called, like, create fire. Control fire. Control fire. <laughs> yeah. And Squash is just ju- create a fire first. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, Squash is just going to reach out his hand. He's going to manipulate uh, like a candle or a lamp that's close by. Not doing like anything oh, yeah. overly Green. fantastic, just like a slight manipulation. So he mumbles a word, moves his hand in a certain way, and the lamp just glows a little bit brighter and then goes out, almost out, and then goes back to normal. You really have been spending too much time around her. <laughs> uh, not nearly enough. This is very uh, self-taught. Don't get me wrong, it's pathetic, but it's it's getting there. I'd like to see you do even fourth of that. 
without swinging a sword. Magic contest. <laughs> <laughs> we are not having a magic contest. What? Talk I've, to me. What's going on? I might, if I can do the exorcism, I might be able to hide her from Grumsh. Right. And it, it would give her at least a choice. If Grumsh is not there, she can think with a clear head. Fuck it. If she never speaks to us again, she never speaks to us again. Speaks to me. You were never part of this. She ain't stupid. Yeah, but she loves you. He doesn't respond. She's not going to want to believe you were a part of this. Well, maybe she will. There's a small smile on his face. So, you got someone who can cast this, or do you think you got away? I might have a way. But, of course, we can't do anything like this until... Um, until our planner hoppings are over. He looks over in her direction. And he looks back and he says, she's getting reprieves. She may not be around much longer if we're not careful. Fucking hell. And he hands over this scroll in a scroll box and he says, do it when you go. And you call me if you need me. If she needs me. Fucking hell. Uh, and he kind of like turns and just like walks back to the party. Um, about this time, Emil and the book come and sit at the table with the rest of you. And the book says, okay, so Emil just came back with these potions that he said that you're, you're all going to like need or something. And like, I'm here to do a thing. And we're just waiting on Demi to get back. And where the hell is Squash? Because we kind of can't do this without him. He's having a conversation right now. Okay, uh, she kind of like stands <clears throat> up and then stands on the the bench. This year, I was like, squash. No, I, you uh, can, okay. A scroll disappears into a sleeve or a pocket somewhere. Like, what? You you actually have a bag of holding? <laughs> yeah, it disappears into a bag of holding. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Your respecter is watching it. Okay, so like we're gonna need a room because we need to like do things and like perform spells and talk about things that literally no one at this party can hear. So, like, is there somewhere we can go? I mean, we've been using the tiny little room that used to be, like, this meditation place. Is that we put, like, tables and stuff in there? Sure. Uh, yeah. Great. <laughs> I, I'm okay. only aware of one batch of potions. I, I don't know what the other one's for, but... So, the four of you, plus the book, plus Demi, plus Emil, kind of all bundle into this little meditation room as it was into the office, so to speak. Um, and the book, like, uh, sits down at, like, the head of the table. She clearly feels like she's going to be in charge of this meeting because she's the easiest voice of me to do. I mean, she's in charge of this meeting. Um, and she says, okay, so, now, I'm pretty sure that y'all have all been, like, traveling through different planes and that kind of thing. So you're totally aware of how time works differently on each plane, right? What? No. Kind of. Like, yeah, like an hour will pass here and something silly, like two hours will pass on the other side or three hours or maybe even like five seconds. Like time is super weird on all the planes compared to like how the physical plane works. Right. You know that, right? Yeah, we had that whole conversation with Mikkel when we had to come back and all that. Right. And of course, like you've all been to different planes and you know that you need to go to different planes to go get the things in Bellum and Cicero. I know, like, you have to go get armies, but I'm pretty sure there's probably something else to do with, like, the whole, like, becoming a sentinel thing that you need to do. I'm pretty sure you're probably going to need to go to different planes for that, at least from what I've picked up, you need to go to different planes for that. You're going to need to go to different planes when we have a very limited window of time. Yep. Sounds about right. Yes. Story of our lives. Are you seeing a problem here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Well, the thing is, um, like between um, like me and Soren and Emil and the book. Yeah, you can't forget me. Yes, I can. Um, so like, you can, 
we can even this out. <laughs> kind of, which is why Emil has potions and he, he nods. The ones that you saw when you were in my alchemy lab earlier. The blue ones. Right, the delicious looking ones, yes. Sugar. I right. forgot the sugar. More's the pity. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we figured out how to even out the time streams. You're not going to like it, so I'm not really going to talk you through it. It's just a little complicated and not wonderful. However, we have figured out how to do it so that you can have time in a normal relative amount of time. So we're going to need you to drink these potions. <laughs> she has like this awkward smile on her face. Right now. Well, not right now. Like before you... Oops, I drank it. Before you tell me where it is that you want to go first. Like if you want to go to... where I mean, I don't, I, I don't really know what you're doing. I mean, if you want to talk me through it, then I can probably help you figure out the magic part of it because I know this. Well, you, Scorch, are going to need to cast the magic part of this. At least that's my assumption. So I kind of, like, maybe what? I don't, maybe I can help, maybe I can't. I have to cast the magic part of this. What is this? Well, she kind of, like, gestures at the four of you. Like, becoming whatever sentinel thing that you are. Because I, I could cast it, but I think it would work better if you probably... I think it's probably the intent. I mean, I didn't I didn't see what you saw. I don't know what you're doing. Um, I mean, maybe I can cast it and then things will be easier, but perhaps I can't and maybe I don't. So I don't I don't know. We saw some kind of weird, like, branding on all four of us. Uh, branding and binding, I know. Right. Yep, that was a thing. Well, do you... Th- Wait, do you think we have to, we have to bind ourselves again? Uh, We have to bind you guys. Okay, so if you want to make a being out of like multiple tiny things, no, no, not tiny. I mean, one of these have got, uh, I'm doing the worst job of this. If you want to bind a bunch of things together to make a bigger hole, yeah, there's going to be some binding magic involved. Like, yeah. Okay, V, out of character. Yes. Are we restricted in any way from explaining all the shit that we have to do to these people i don't remember no i think you were specifically told that the seven plus the people inside um the room plus one other could know about what you're doing including our tasks i don't remember if those were allowed to be talked about you don't know actually you haven't tried okay so i uh, where do we even start with this we need Start. to do things that require us going to different places. And I, d- I don't know how much detail we can go into about we saw what we saw and what we have to do, because I don't know if this part is part of the thing where we can talk. You to can you. share visions. And Demi like points directly at Lafian. Technically, yes. Not as well as I used to, but. Share with me what you saw. And if it's not meant to be explained, then I the worst I'll do is end up with a headache. Well, and a bloody nose, and I might pass out for a few hours, but it's nothing I can't handle. Sure, if that's what you want. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure I want it, but I think it might be useful. It might help you help us to help everyone. Yes, exactly. And like, if one unconscious was uh, one unconscious, like mage is is not a problem in the big scheme of things. Thank you. <laughs> And the book's like, but I kind of want it. Shut up. <laughs> I appreciate your, your um, input. I've known Demi longer. Okay. What do I need to do? Do I need to like, do you need touch? Do I just need to be like here? What do I need to do to do this? I don't remember how you said you did be this. Be there. So. Be you. And open up your mind to the possibilities. <sighs> and also my consciousness. Okay. Um, you're going to need to give me a moment. Um, I, I need to make sure that... The, yeah, if you, you can make sure that the thing that doesn't like elves doesn't come after me. Yeah. Like, do you remember the whole wall thing that you and I built when you had Marduk in there mm-hmm. when we did, like, the original binding? Like, I need to make sure that that's, like, well up and dry. I mean, Damas is nearby, so that kind of really helps things. Uh, you know. And you see her, like, take the deepest breath and just, like, very slowly let it out. And she, like, opens her eye again. She looks up at you and you can just see, like, her iris is uh, brown. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Laughing's going to reach out with his senses and uh, try to share everything that transpired. The visions okay. that they um, saw. Um, is there anything that I would want to not show? 
you guys help me because my memory is a little foggy. Is there anything that would we should not be showing? Well, like aside from Squash's little shenanigans, I don't think of anything I wouldn't be sharing. No, I, I, I don't. Uh, Laffian has enough sense to know that he's not going to share any of your little mischievous scheming that you've been doing. Well, you you may or may not be aware of them, but mostly, like, if you're just sharing the vision, there was none of Squash's shenanigans in there. <laughs> no, I, think I mean, so. there wasn't in the background, like, a drooling Demi missing half of a, half of a god in her. Like, there was none of that there. <laughs> yeah, so basically that then. Okay. You share with her the vision of the things that you see and you kind of, it's a very easy process. Like Demi is ready for receiving whatever this information is. She was clearly prepared for the idea before you came in. Um, and as her eyes like slowly begin to clear again and they begin to go red, you can see that she's like moving things and like making decisions. She's coming to ideas of what the hell she just saw and figuring out what it means. Okay. Okay. Right. I I think hmm, hmm. We know some Squash, of them. You Okay, tell me what you know. Okay. So we know that mine is probably the easiest understanding wise because it's Isilta, which is one of the original like the old uh monarchs of the Elven Kingdom. Before I was, will take your word for that. He's he's in a way my my namesake, sort of. Um we would basically need to go to his his sarcophagus tomb? tomb. Yes. We would need to go there, which is beneath Belagbud, in order to get to Cicero, where apparently my, my, my thing is Zoltana's is somewhere mm-hmm, in Kino, mm-hmm. in the wastes of Tisaramu. Okay. Rawls is somewhere in Bellum. Okay. Right. And then right. Squash's is the stocking. Yes. We know it to be the hourglass of Bikram. Yes, I I kind of recognize that. That was a that was a that was a biggie. Um <laughs> The Waste of Tsiamu, I I think I might I think I might know where that is. I mean I haven't been there, but I think I know where that is. Like I think I could get you there like pretty easily. So that's that's not a problem. Um Ish Ish Ishmael, Ishtar, Ishlana, um sorry. Um Isilza? your Yes, that one. Um I could get you to Belik Bood, but I, I can't really go and find that um, with you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd probably have to pester my father a bunch. Yes, yes, that would probably be a, a good thing. Like, Trempel could get you to Belik Bood, not a problem. I, I'm offering him. I mean, maybe Dana could too. I mean, uh, blame me. I wonder um, if I could bring my brother with me. That'd be helpful. Yes, but maybe not tell him what you're doing or why you're doing it. No, no, no. Um, having something of his, if he really is like the the old king, if he really is where we would find like your task, then 100% something of his would really help me to be able to push you guys to where you need to go onto Cicero. Um, the lady that you saw um, in Bellum, um, if we can have something of hers, then it would really help me be able to push you where she's going. Um, so maybe I could work with... Um, some people, maybe Emil, if you could, and he just like nods, like. I think Emma had a pretty good idea of where to start with that. That young lady and I have a good working relationship. We could work it out. Okay, so you and you and you and you. Hmm. 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 <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I was right. Binding magic is a thing. That's what you were casting um, on the four of you. You just didn't see the completion of the spell. Um, I'm going to need to write a very detailed how-to guide. Um, Yes, you are. Because that is super complicated magic. Um, And we have to figure out how to get you that magic. Um, hmm. Well, I can do a lot of magic. I can see you have learned so much magic. Like it's just literally written all over you. Like your entire body is just like anyway, magic. Um it's written all over you. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh okay. Well, if you're not gonna be 
I mean, you might be... Hmm. You should probably take the potion that Emil was prepared now, and then I can cast the spell to bind you to that one, and points over at the book, and then that should equal out some of the time dilation things that you will suffer from moving from A to B um, on the different planes, and then you can just call me... Oh, right, yes, um, this is what... Um, our our friend um uh Dandaril managed to pick up for us. Um I have some I have some things and she kind of like like pats down her, her armor, like very uncomfortable with it, and she like pulls out like these small stones and they're kind of like really small blue stones and she like puts one hand out with a stone and she says, Okay, so um I can see that you can cast ending and she puts it out on the table in front of Squash. Like, these stones should make it easier for you to get hold of me if you're using sending. Um, otherwise, I was just going to get you a bunch of sending scrolls, but if you can already do it, then I guess that's kind of... How did you learn that? You shouldn't be able to sp- uh, cast that at all. Uh, I learned it from a scroll. And then I channel kind it. What magic user are you? So, I'm mostly channeling it through... Um, the eye of winter that touched me. I got a tingling feeling for what magic was. I, 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 mm. And I've just been kind of pulling on that thread since. I don't have the time to figure out what your magic is, but it is not my kind of magic. Um, or Dana's magic. Like, Dana can only learn certain spells and only I can only learn certain spells after we get to a certain point in our magical careers. Maybe you're just... Whew. I don't know how to explain it. Like, Maybe have you ever, brain. like, moved a muscle you didn't know you had? Yes, so many times. You have no idea. Okay, that's that's concerning. But yes, okay, it was uh, something along those lines. Like when the Eye of Winter, uh, like, gave me magic. It was just a muscle I've never pulled before. It was very obvious after that what it all was. Well, not obvious, but you know what I mean. Okay, it's just that. You're learning certain spells, and you're only supposed to be able to cast certain spells. Like sending is very much like a purview of like the um the 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 the, the religious folk, the paladins, and the the clerics. Actually, I think that's mostly just the way beyond actually, me. But... I'm just copying the movements of the. Well, I'm just copying the movements and the uh, the incantations. I don't know anything about the gods. Okay, I am going to need to pick your brain so much after this because that is fascinating. Uh, but not right this second. Um. Where do you want to go, like, right now? I mean, where 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 do you want to start? I mean, I can send you to... Uh, I can send you to any of the planes, but we don't have a specific place to go to. Uh, at least not, yeah, at least not until, like, we get the things from here or there or whatever. Um, well, the stalking, I could just kick you into the stalking. I actually think I know a village near where that is, so I think that would work. Squash just looks over to Lafian. I believe we have the best idea of how to do yours. That seems to be the case, yes. I highly doubt that Emil and Dana have had time to consider the things I asked. Squash is looking at Emil. Funnily enough, no, we haven't. So I'd like not to do mine right away. And uh, Kino is about to get embroiled in war. We probably shouldn't like jumpstart that by dropping our asses in the middle of their country. Yeah, that's probably not a good but idea. But we totally could. I mean, like, the waste of Tisimu are basically almost uninhabited apart from the Yuan-Te, 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 apart from the yuan and, like, a few people who are working in that general area. Like, mostly it's just empty. Well, I actually probably expect the forge isn't empty because if that's part of the trial, then that's probably a thing. The what? I mean, I can't get exactly there. Well, there's just like this thing called like the Forge of the World or the End of the World's Forge. I don't really freaking know. Um, but there is a place nearby. Like, you would just have to find it the same way that you found like the Lost City of Draneth. Like, it's it's in a trench somewhere. At least I think that is. Is there a keynote version that, like, of Squash we have to find? Is that what you're saying? We need to find another person that's been to this thing by chance. Uh, n- no, I could just drop you nearby, and then you could just look for humor, it. I mean, humor. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Well, I didn't enjoy I the idea really of a different version mentioned. of me. I am already way too bad. Different version of you that's three times as tall. What? <clears throat> what? <laughs> the fuck so, like, I could you get you bastard? really close to it and then you could just go, stop it, stop it. I could get you 
like to the kino place like really really close and then you could just do that or i could get you to belly but it doesn't really matter and then you could just call me with your sending or with the stones or something like that kind of works really good across like planes it just makes the focus a little better like it makes the chances easier um it's it's up to you i uh, leave it up to the group that's it, it's whatever we can go and i can try to find what we need in bellum whenever because I just needed to check with Bogram or something. And uh, it's, it seems fine. So as as soon as we get something from Liliana, we will be able to do that. So Tana, do you want to um, go be drenched in blood at a forge right away? <laughs> she looks like really awkward saying it. <laughs> I mean, there's like, no time where I don't want to be drenched in blood. Um, so, but I will capitulate to whatever the group wants. Um, wow, the three of you are just not fighting over doing your task first, huh? Fine, I don't we think any do. of us are particularly looking forward to this. We can do thing. my task I get first a good if you really... reason why my task is bad. <laughs> we can do my task first. It's not a well, big deal. Well, I just thought mine should be last because it's the only one that's here on this plane. I mean, arguably, that might be the easiest one to gain access to then, so we probably should. Yeah, let's go fuck up Kino. Hell yeah. That's forge, not... Forge, 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 Maybe Zoltana's forge, gonna go forge, there and forge, forge like some sort of crazy powerful transportation thing. It, a, a, a vehicle, I think I used to call them as a child. Tensors interplanar discs. <laughs> <laughs> Zoltana's uh, gonna forge a, a full-sized arcane vehicle. A tri a, a triene, <laughs> I believe they're called. Let's just get this over with, and then we can figure out everything else. Since nobody else okay. is volunteering to have theirs first, I'll do mine first. Emil, did you make the other thing too? By the way, he nods. We should probably save that. Perhaps it would be wise to save this until you return from the forge. Okay, I'm very curious, to be honest. We could do this this evening. And then Demi, if you're still around. Yeah, I'll be out around tomorrow. Well, I, 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 a former maybe around tomorrow, so I could send you tomorrow. Not a problem. I, I should probably explain because I didn't tell you guys before. Um, so I continued reading that book on true names, and um, basically, in order to learn your true name, you need to be like super passed out. And the book had a recipe for a potion that apparently is supposed to make it so that you can do this soul searching thing. That's so easy. Just scare me. I will be passed out. I'll find it. Uh, like, not just like passed out, like blackout, unconscious, but like, I think lucid oh. dreaming, most likely. Oh, yeah. You made it sound easier than it was for a second. Well, no, you, uh, I think you just. <laughs> you made it sound like I should pass out and then I find my name out. Cool. Oh, it's easy. <laughs> well, no, I think there's a little more soul, soul searching involved than that. Hmm. It's up to like, you guys if you want to wait, or if we could do it tonight and then <laughs> go tomorrow in the morning. Uh, <laughs> I, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, well, does it? Like, I don't know. I'm just... Well, it's like... It's getting super close to midnight, so like you can either like go there and then sleep, or you can sleep here and then go there. Like it's, it, it doesn't really matter. I just, you, you know, it's... I don't want to sleep or meditate in a desert. That sounds uncomfortable. Let's... Let's sleep here and find out a true names and then go in the morning. It would be easier to travel, maybe. In the desert at night? Maybe. Everyone's indecisiveness is driving me a little insane. Let's just <laughs> do the easy thing. Let's go to sleep. The book, what do you think? Like, I'm normally okay with like complete... Ca well, I personally think that maybe you should try this potion thing, find out your names, make sure that only the people you know and trust, people who can get you out of whatever this like whole send all bullshit thing that you're doing is, maybe you should do that first and then in the morning go travel. Because like, you're going to have to sleep or meditate depending on like, you know, you. And she gestures at uh, Lafayette. Like, you know, you're going to have to do that anyway. And it's much better to do that in a place where you're safe. And hey, if you got to go to sleep and you got to find out your true name or you don't have to, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It depends how well you think you're going to get out of this. So like, that's what I do. That's fair. Emil thinks it's a hoax, but yeah. 
Thank you, the book. Yeah, well, Emil is like 3,000 years old, and he's like <laughs> super old. And you can see Emil just like roll his eyes. <laughs> so like everything that's new is like... The term you're looking for is old-fashioned. Right, yeah. He's like totally old-fashioned. I mean, like not as old-fashioned as Soren, who's like 5,000 years old, <laughs> but like Soren's cool. All right, so I, I think that sounds like we're going to be learning our names and then we'll go do the forge blood... Thing in the morning. <laughs> oh, sounds great! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe those words are coming sounds out of so, my mouth. Sounds so sounds so exciting when you phrase it like that. Um, and we all like basically hands over this like purple, like really thick potion. Um, it doesn't look appetizing at all. Does it smell like grape? Um, Is it grape medicine? No, you open it. It just smells like sulfur. It's just pretty rough. Um, and he kind of like hands them over to everyone, and he says. I'd advise just pounding this. Sugar? And no, unfortunately sugar would ruin this, my boy. Oh. Just chuck it and let it take you. For you, Lafayette, you might need to drink this faster than the others, since you don't traditionally sleep. Oh, is this going to hurt? I shouldn't think so. Okay. But as mentioned before, I think this is a hoax. <laughs> okay, um, great. Yep. No time like the present. Cool. <laughs> chug, chug, chug. Laughing goes in a corner and gets himself chuck comfortable. You got chuck here at the table. <laughs> oh no, I was standing up. Follow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but a completely familiar situation for all. Um, being <laughs> yeah. not being a, a f- complete fool, Zoltana's gonna excuse herself from the party, go to her chambers, and then drink it. What? <laughs> okay, yeah, what? yeah, we're doing this now. That's <laughs> Well, it's the end of the night. What? It's almost midnight. I misunderstood midnight. what time is the present. They said uh, it's okay. almost midnight. The time of the present is closer to midnight. Yeah. No time like the present. I thought that uh, was. I thought that meant now. I drank it. <laughs> <laughs> Raul drinks it, passes out in the middle of the party, and everyone's just like, oh, "Okay, yeah this this is this is what's happening again." Uh, <laughs> oh, Raul yeah. at parties. Um, like, yeah, Demi, Demi goes over and like you see her like. Like her shoulders like broaden a little bit, and you see her hands get a little thicker, and she just like grabs Raoul by the back of his neck and like begins to drag him out. Um, her eyes have like gone slightly blacker in the in the in the exchange, and yeah, she's gonna drag him to his bed and just throw him on it. <laughs> um, okay, is everyone chugging their potions and going to bed in a traditional sense of actually going to a bed? Yes, yes. Raoul. <laughs> and I'm downing mine as fast as I fucking can without choking on it. Okay. Um you find yourself unfamiliar in a bed. Not a thing. Um okay, cool. Um just before um squash, just before like you chug your potion, um like Demi just like puts her hand out to you for a second and she says You're gonna be a timekeeper. You know that, right? Uh those words were said to me. What the hell does that mean? You know how I like some of the old stories is like the father of time? Or the mother of time, or the parent of time, depending. Yes, yes, those words are also said to me. What does that mean? Um, you know how dwarves and elves live way longer than anyone else. Oh yeah, like you and me. Like oh, we have yeah. like maybe some. Well, I have like maybe a couple of months. Well, hopefully many more years than that. But um, yeah, you you um you'll be a lot more in line with them until someone else becomes the timekeeper. So you might be living for a really long as time. Like you'll be like this age for like a really long time. Um, and then like it will kind of become your duty to look after the progression of time. So if people like break time or like they speed up time or, you know, all that stuff, it's kind of ends up being your duty to keep an eye on it. Like what? You, you, you are going to be a thing. Spectre's not going to be happy with you. <laughs> I, I, did, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't want any of that. Why, why would uh, that fall to me? Like Demi kind of like sits cross-legged on the end of your bed and she says because that's you, you're going to become the magic part of the Sentinel and you need magic to do that and some of the magic that is in that big the spell that you cast to bind everyone together into like one Sentinel type thing at least temporarily the sand around the edge is from it's from the hourglass of Bikron. That's my best guess. 
At least I'm pretty sure that would make sense as to how all this would work. What? I, I, I don't know how to undo it yet, but I can look. But you need to do this for a while. Okay, okay. I might. Who's the current timekeeper? She shrugs. I don't know. Is this going to kill them? I don't think so. I think like time basically resets for them. Maybe. Okay. Well, if they want to be a timekeeper, they can just take it back. <laughs> That's but what... after you're done. Well, yeah. Like, after you're done, though. This is when we learn as Jen Kisso. Jen Kisso is immortal. <laughs> That's how he's so f- f- wonderfully flamboyant. <laughs> Okay, um, that sounds very... Okay, okay. Uh, we're all doing this for a uh, greater purpose. All yeah, exactly. It's... I mean... Exactly. Are you okay? There isn't an answer to that question, Demi. Do you want me to stay here until um, you wake up after this? I can, if you want. I I, I wouldn't wouldn't want to bother you. Hey, like you literally stole my bed for like seven days while you were taking the uh, wear out cure, and I slept in a chair. So like this is absolutely nothing. One night, it's nothing. I didn't ask for that, but thank you. My back felt very good when I woke up. Your bed was very soft. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of accidentally set fire to it a lot, so they they keep giving me new beds, so. Well, I'm going to get off your bed, because this would be super awkward if you're asleep on the bed and I'm sitting on here, so I'm just going to sit down here and... Um, Get it, Squash, get it, get it. (laughs) Uh, Squash just grabs the potion in one (laughs) hand. Uh, It's just like, it's been nice seeing you again. You know, yeah. under less crazy circumstances. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, how did how did the Swift Nibblin say it again? Uh, he raises the the potion, and here's to many more. <laughs> Pops out, uh, chucks the whole thing. <laughs> uh, before your head even hits the pillow, you are unconscious, as is everyone else who took the potion. Um, okay. Um, we will do the dream sequency stuff next time, but I do require each of you to give me what you would consider your true names mm. so that we can oh, get no. to that point. Please. That is. Mm. Now I have to think words. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say thank you for coming to my birthday party and all the cool presents that you guys gave me. So thank you for that. And I want to say thank you to Auntie Anna and Uncle Rao and, and Uncle Lafian and Mr. Squash for the cool presents that they gave me. I'm going to go back and, and play Strife Mallet with um, Rondi and Zach and Daddy and Rose really soon. But I wanted to say thank you to all of you um, for coming before I go and finish that game. I'm not 100% sure I understand how it works, but I'm going to give it a go. It looks really cool. And I want to say thank you to John Sale and TT RPG Roulette for coming to my birthday. Um, They have special places because they're our patrons. So thank you. And I want to say thank you to Mr. J for voicing Mr. Um, Emil Scott. Thank you. And um, I also wanted to talk to all of you about something that's really cool. Um, Daddy said that this is a podcast and this is a podcast thing that I've been listening to and it's called The End of Time and Other Bothers and it's about flightless fairies and half demons and cafeteria line workers. I'm not entirely sure what that means though, but it's really cool and um, and it's the end of time and that's in there somewhere too in this whole thing and it's about a cafeteria worker and this demonic filing clerk who's really helpful and really fun and a fairy PR executive and they are just really cool and they get thrown back in time and like we're playing Strife Mallet here but they're playing this game called Dungeon World Roleplaying and um, it's really cool and I really want you guys to go listen to them. You've probably heard some of them before because I know that um, 
Mr. Sean was on one of our stories called The Reckless Plays and he's really cool and he's been really nice to all of us and we really wish that you would go listen to The End of Time and Other Bothers and the other show he works on called Civilized. But um, I, I just want I just want to give you guys a present and um, here's the ad for End of Time. The End of Time and Other Bothers. An improvised fantasy role-playing podcast set in the world of Alba Salix. The world has still ended. Do you guys see how pretty it is outside, though? So, you give presentations of some kind. This extremely devastating explosion was, in fact, a celebration. And you, my good lady, ladle cheap foodstuffs out to people. All right, fairy, demon, sit down and shut up. Thank heavens, we three have been chosen to be the saviors of the entire multiverse. Do you see that minotaur sitting out in the food court? What minotaur? He was right there. There were some zombies, but Black blew them up. I climbed a tree. And we're Black, skipping ahead, and, and we're skipping we're, ahead. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Three normal dweebs thrown back in time to an era of magic. What is this place? <laughs> sent on an adventure more absurd than they ever could have imagined. Egerton, you didn't even need a fairy cake. Why did you eat a fairy cake? Because I stress eat sometimes. That's The End of Time and Other Bothers from the makers of Alba Salix Royal Physician. Listen and subscribe at otherbothers.com or search for Other Bothers in your favorite podcast app. Do I get to keep all of my body parts? (laughs) Not if I have any say in it. Oh... 